I want to thank Lori Metz for being here to support our webinar and introduce our presenters. Lori, I'm going to turn the webinar over to you so you can introduce the topic and our presenters. All right. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that intro and all your assistance on this webinar today. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your interest uh, in learning more about the Vegetation GIS data system for widespread use throughout NRCS. And again, I'm Lori Metz. I am with the SEEP Grazing Lands uh, component, and that is housed within NRCS's Resource Assessment Division, which is within the Soil Science Resource Assessment Deputy Area. Today's presentation will give you an overview of VGS capabilities, how our partners in the U.S. Forest Service have benefited from their use of VGS. And before we take questions, uh, we'll wrap it up with some, some key talking points about VGS. Feel free to download the presentation and the VGS executive summary that are located within one of the pods on Adobe Connect for your use offline. So today our speakers include, of course, myself, uh, but mostly Dr. Del Despain with the University of Arizona. He is also the VGS creator and developer. And Mike Hanneman, the U.S. Forest Service National Range Ecologist located in Washington, D.C. Uh, we were hoping also to get Dana Larson, the National Grazing Land Team Leader, on the call. She is very supportive as well of VGS. Um, I think she's uh, in another meeting, so she c can't join us quite yet. And then, of course, Rachel Mead, the State Rangeland Management Specialist in Colorado, she also could not be with us, but she encourages others uh, as you hear the presentation and if you want to explore VGS on your own, she is very, very willing to take questions, uh, to talk to anybody, b because Colorado and Wyoming are actually both demoing VGS. Uh, so VGS was developed by Dr. Despain out of his necessity to more efficiently collect, organize, retrieve, and interpret field data, plus provide a quick report to producers in the field after data collection. As a rangeland ecologist, Dell's initial VGS capabilities were focused on vegetation inventory and monitoring protocols for grazing land settings. But as you'll see in the presentation, the tools and data management abilities within VGS apply to all landscapes and all land uses. VGS is supported by NRCS's Soil Science Resource Assessment Division, Science and, or Deputy Area, Science and Technologies Deputy Area, and other deputy areas and divisions as a data collection and management system for the agency. And it is also CCE approved, so you can download it to your NRCS um, computer. So as we all know, NRCS uh, has multiple data sources and data types. We have a whole lot of data at varying scales, but really how do we access it? How do we make that data work for us? On this slide, you can see that, that uh, we collect data in field offices, area office and state offices, soil survey offices, and then we have um, national initiatives, we have uh, technology needs for data, we have innovation grant needs for data, and of course the Conservation Effects Assessment Project uh, has a great need for uh, gathering and, and utilizing data in our assessments. Data types are both quantitative and qualitative. So there's just a lot of data out there that we have, that we are collecting, that we don't seem to be able to manage very well. And some of the problems that we have are centered around our inability to really enter data in one data management system and then retrieve it efficiently and effectively to work for us. So we have a problem of having too many databases. Every office or partner or project usually maintains their own database. Conversely, we, have, we often find we have not enough databases. We still end up using paper forms in the field. We're always trying to tweak databases to, to try and make them work for us. But again, we just don't really have uh, the right databases. They're often not easy to utilize in the field, nor can they handle both qualitative and quantitative data in many instances. They also don't usually provide quick results in the field to help us make decisions with our producers that we're working with. And often, once we do collect data, we can't upload it to the current NRCS frameworks. When CDSI is rolled out, uh, if you're working with NASIS, if you have other uh, NRCS data frameworks that you're working within, a lot of your field data 
doesn't talk back to those systems. We can't actually just upload it into those frameworks to make it work for us. And of course, we have problems with aggregating data to provide summaries, whether we're providing a summary for NRCS management, so uh, kind of a results-related summary, uh, summaries for our cooperators if they're interested in doing adaptive management, summaries for resource, state resource assessments regarding optimization of conservation practice application, and then all of our other technical tools, uh, ecological site descriptions and others, plus, of course, the SEEP assessments. So uh, I, I don't need to let you guys know what the problems and issues are. So let's roll into uh, finding a solution. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Del Despain, and he's going to uh, share with us just what is VGS, and then we'll roll into Mike Hanneman with the Forest Service, and then I'll close with some key talking points. Okay, thanks, Lori. Um, I want to start out just by uh, indicating to you that VGS started out as a grassroots effort. It, it was cr uh, created to meet a need, a specific need in the field. It was not developed under a contract with a computing company or something like that, but it started out to meet specific needs. And so from the very beginning, uh, people from the from the various agencies that started to use this have uh, given their input and provided feedback as to what works and doesn't work. Uh, Mike Hanneman, who will be uh, talking with you uh, at the end of my presentation, uh, was involved as part of that. And so, so this really is a ground up application as to how it got started. And it's more than just data recording. VGS started, uh, started out from the very beginning wanting to do more than just record the data, but also to be able to manage and organize the data and then be able to make use of that data and summarize it and even use it out in the field, uh, we're able to do so. And so um, it provides electronic field tablet entry as well as office data forms uh, to meet needs both in the field and uh, in the office. But it also uh, is designed to provide a way to keep your data organized. And we'll talk quite a bit about that as we go through this presentation. So not only do we want to handle field sampling data, but also any photographs or diagrams, documents, different things associated with that field data so that it can be accessed easily from within the framework of that uh, data management uh, framework that it deals with. And then we are in the process of providing uh, links and components to integrate it in with GIS aspects as well. And then, of course, being able to report the data, analyze it, and use it is also very important. So we also have uh, some specific uh, reporting capability, but also general reporting capabilities within the application. There's really, uh, let's start with the first of those three areas and talk about recording data. And there's really three kinds of forms available within the application. There's the field data entry forms, which primarily deal with repetitive often quantitative sampling data. Then there are office data entry forms that let you examine or enter historical data, also typically multi-sample or repetitive type data. And that's where VGS got its start, was with this field multi-sample or repetitive sampling data. But then we've also added into that what we call survey data entry, which is really more about single, often qualitative kinds of assessment, uh, where you go out and you simply answer a bunch of questions about a certain situation or make uh, certain assumptions and uh, certain data entry in the framework of more of a survey um, or single assessment type. And so, uh, we want to be able to accommodate that as well, and so we've done that. 
So we'll start with the data recording end of things, and this is a, a typical field form within VGS. Of course, we don't have time to go through and demo all this, but just to kind of give you an idea of the overall uh, paradigm that is used within, within the application. What you're looking at here would be a typical data entry form for one sample. VGS deals with one sample at a time, and that's what makes it quite unique and why people like it so well in the field. And in this particular example, we're actually collecting three kinds of data. So if you look at the if you look at this uh, top section here, that's the navigation component. This is repetitive type data, so you're dealing with transects and samples, and in this case there's four transects of 50 samples each. And you're dealing with, in this example, with the very first sample in transect one. The center section is where the results of your data entry is posted, and in this case is visual to the type of data that's being entered. And then down here in the, in the bottom is where the data input is actually made. And whatever shows up down here in the bottom matches the kind of data that's being entered. So in this case, they're just entering species names. So you have a list of species to enter, which pulls from the entire NRCS plants database. And uh, in this case, this is a different sampling protocol. And in this case, at the moment, even though species were species were entered here, and now it's asking for numbers associated with those plant species, and so it hides the species input panel and shows this numeric data input panel in which they can enter the data. But still, you're just looking at one sample, which in this case, a transect is a sample. But uh, the idea is to try and eliminate as much as we can any writing or scrolling or drop downs or anything that requires uh, input by the uh, that would slow down the input process by the recorder or uh, and the interesting thing that we found is that we've reduced the amount of fatigue that the recorder has to deal with in trying to keep up with data entry because they are dealing with just one sample at a time, and everything pops up just what they need for entering that particular kind of data. So the advantages that we found to this in dealing with just one sample or subsample at a time, and by eliminating all those controls, is not only do we get more accurate data, but as I mentioned, the fatigue level is greatly decreased for that person doing the recording. We also try to keep our controls so that they're visible in the field, easily used, uh, typically on a tablet. That entire screen is available, uh, even though we're just dealing with one single sample. Now, these field data entry forms that we've been talking about um, are put together uh, in what we cumulatively call the protocol. So you create a protocol, and an individual protocol can consist of multiple forms, and each form can have multiple pages if necessary. We try to stay away from that as much as we can. And then within each page, you have your methods. In that example we were looking at early, there was actually three different kinds of data that were being recorded on a single sample. And so you had the three data modules. So the only thing that must exist ahead of time is, is the modules to actually record the data. But those can be grouped into protocols and organized in such a way that it fits your sampling process and your procedures so that it works for you rather than you having to fit yourself into that. Uh, into that mode, and we want to we want to eliminate columns and rows because columns and rows, and writing and trying to get your data into the right little box like you have to on a 
spreadsheet or something really slows you down and adds to that stress level and to the, uh, to the uh, problem of introducing errors. And so it reduces that tremendously and has been, been found to be very helpful. Once configured, those protocols can be shared among other users and their devices so that you don't have to recreate those for every user. And so for a particular area, a particular need, a protocol is created. Once it's developed, it can be handed off to everyone else and they can put it into VGS and use that exact same protocol, including the lists and options that uh, are needed to record the data. Modules, this is just a list of a variety of modules that are included in VGS for in the field data forms. Most of these have to do with vegetation sampling because that's where VGS got its start. And we're now moving into the, into the uh, soils area and forestry and a few other areas. And, uh, but uh, anything that is added for anyone is available to everyone that ends up using VGS since it's a, a free and kind of a community application. Now some of the field protocol examples that we put together that are being used on a broad scale basis of course includes the vegetation inventory and monitoring protocols. Uh, we're also uh, right now the Forest Service is using VGS for all of their sage-grouse habitat framework data collection throughout the West. And another example is uh, uh, in another endangered species is the New Mexico meadow jumping mouse. Uh, is habitat assessment and monitoring is being conducted using VGS in the Southwest. Now the second kind of form there you have the field forms. The second kind is, is the office data entry. And you know, those field forms are great for in the field, but then when you come back to the office and need to do some corrections, or if you're entering historical data, then those field forms aren't necessarily the most efficient anymore. And so we do have uh, tabular type data entry that can also be used for the same sets of data uh, in case that turns out to be more efficient in the office when you're recording uh, repetitive data off of um, paper forms um, or if you have to make broad scale changes to the data that was entered. So we do provide those kinds of forms, but even a lot of people in the office prefer to use the field forms, so it just kind of depends on what you're doing. Now the third type of form that we talked about is those survey forms. And uh, this is an example of a survey form. This is for interpreting indicators of rangeland health. It's just one page uh, out of that survey. But these surveys are designed that you can create those completely on your own. So people can develop their own surveys and uh, Each of the questions can have sub-questions. There's different kinds of data input. You can associate tips or recommendations or instructions with each question. You can associate a comment, allow a user to enter notes or a comment with each question. And again, depending on which question is active, then the necessary input panel for entering that data then shows up down here at the bottom where the data entry is actually made. Unless it's just a, a list like this question right here for surface effervescence, then you just click on the correct box. But where you have to actually input some numbers or type in some characters and that input is available down here at the bottom. And uh, so this is extremely flexible and uh, we're improving that all the time. So just in summary, it is fully user, 
user configurable. Various input types are available, numeric, text, lists, checks boxes, and so forth. There can be hierarchical items, uh, as we mentioned, with sub-questions uh, and sub-questions of those sub-questions and so forth. Uh, the tips and instructions we mentioned and then the user comments. Some exams, examples of existing forms that we're testing and working with is the indicators of rangeland health form that you uh, just saw an example of, uh, resource concerns checklist, pasture condition score, and wildlife habitat evaluation guides. Of course, those wildlife habitat evaluation guides are different for every state, and so each state can create their own to meet their specific needs. Some additional modules that we're starting to work on, some of which require more customized work uh, that don't fit within the modules that we've already collected, uh, include things such as the soil description forms um, that we're beginning to work on, and uh, multiple indicator riparian monitoring, known as MIN, that's used especially in the Northwest uh, for riparian monitoring. And uh, that one was actually pretty high on the list until the sage grouse came along, and then we shifted gears, and, and uh, our priorities shifted toward sage grouse, uh, the people that were funding that work. And so now we're going to get back into the, to the MIM sampling and make that available. And in both cases, we want to do some, some really visual kinds of data input. For the soil description forms, I envision actually building a ped on as you're entering the data for the for the various uh, soil horizons so that you can have a visual representation of the data you're entering which will help keep you uh, straight as to exactly where the data are going and what you're entering and and we'll have to see how that works out but that's our vision right now we're also getting more into forest inventory and assessment a lot of that of course is similar to the vegetation assessment that we already do but there will be uh, some other unique aspects to that. And uh, as you'll see in a minute, all of the data that we collect is organized, associated with a location or with an entity. And in the case of wild horse and burrow management, a horse becomes the entity as opposed to a location. And we'll be doing some uh, historical tracking of uh, everything from ejections to adoption history and things like that is to, to track these wild horses and burrows as individual animals. And so uh, we've been funded to do some of that work as well. So, so this keeps growing. And as I mentioned, any capabilities that come to VGS, then everybody else can make use of it if it works within the framework of their needs. Now, in addition to field data, and sampling data and uh, qualitative data. There's also photos and diagrams and all kinds of things associated with a location or an entity that needs to, to be organized as well with that. And so we have a way to uh, organize your photos, and you can compare those photos in this photo manager. Um, for example, here's uh, two historical photos, one from the 1970s and one from the early 2000s, and you can compare those and discuss them in the field and have those with you to, to work with. In addition to photos, then, you can also associate uh, documents, PDF documents, with a particular location. You've got, um, you can associate other documents as well, but if you want to look at them, then they need to be either photos or uh, PDFs, and so that's available so that we can keep all of this information together and have it with us when we go to the field uh, or when we're doing more regional types of analysis. Okay, so now, once we've collected the data, then organizing that information and those pictures and everything associated with it becomes important uh, in order to make use of that. So the paradigm that VGS uses to organize the data is very similar to what you're used to on your computers. Everything is organized in terms of folders. 
The only difference, instead of storing files in the folders, you're storing locations or entities in the location. So this is similar to File Explorer on your computer. Over here on the left is your folder structure, which you create on your own to meet whatever your needs are or that you create on a regional basis or organizational basis. Uh, over here on the right is your actual sites or locations where the data was collected. And then down here in the bottom is simply information that you can view about those sites. And so and you can have multiple folder structures. So for example, if we zoom in on this diagram a little bit, you know, it's up here at the top is a section of those folders where the sites have been organized by ecological site. And so you have your folders organized by um, MLRAs and uh, on down to your precip zone and then to your ecological site. And so within this clay loam upland, this example shows two sites associated with that clay loam upland. Well, down here farther on the page, you have another structure that's an administrative structure where you have folders by district and by ranch in this case. And on the Cedow Ranch, you have pastures. And within this Jackson 1 pasture, then, you have one site. And notice that this site is the same site that is up here under the Clay Loam Upland site. Uh, and by site, I don't mean ecological site. I just mean location or site where the data was collected. So uh, you can organize these locations into multiple folder structures so that they can be searched and looked for in multiple ways in, and meet whatever your organization's needs are to organize that. And so when you store a location within a folder, and if you store it within multiple folders, there are not two copies of that folder like there would be on your computer with files. It's actually just referencing the same location so that any changes that are made through one hierarchical structure, any changes that are made to the data, then that, of course, is passed through to, to anyone else who is looking it up in a different way because it's actually the same location. So all of your data and all of your uh, pictures and, and uh, diagrams then can be associated with these individual sites so that you can keep track of it and keep a historical record of what goes on on that particular location. Well, once you get the data organized, recorded, and you have it, then of course the next step is to get it out and report on it. And uh, there's multiple kinds of reports. This particular report is a historical report that shows the same kind of data that was collect, collected throughout the years uh, over a long period of time, and uh, which allows us to look at some history and track the history of, of the uh, vegetation on these sites in this case, and also the uh, soil ground cover, which is not in this individual picture. But uh, this particular report allows us to view that history. And the nice thing about having all this data with us is that you can, when we go to the field, you can show it to the rancher and say, OK, here's what's going on. Here's what it looked like 20 years ago. This is what it looked like, what it looks like now. Let's talk about it. You can look at the pictures over time. Uh, so there's lots of ways that you can use this. And every report in VGS can be exported to Excel and so that you can graph things or make it look how you want it to look, because everybody wants their reports to look different. Um, but the information is provided here so that you can get access to it. There are also reports that are more analytical in nature. Uh, you can, uh, in other words, it does the analytical portion of the work that needs to be done so that you get the results back. And you can get that back as soon as it's been entered. So in this case, this is uh, forage production. And it calculates that for you. And then you're, you're ready to go with it from there. There's those kinds of reports. We also have 
interactive reports. Now these are more customized. They have to be more custom to a particular need, uh, but we can do that. In this particular case, this is the sage grouse uh, habitat assessment framework reports. And this is one of those reports where it presents on the left-hand side the results of the data that were collected. But over here on the right, in this area here, you can actually inject data into those reports. So you can look at the, re the results over here and make decisions and assumptions and uh, add different information that in interprets your results or how you interpreted these results, either way, you enter that into here and it actually injects it into the report so that when you print or export this report, what you've entered up in here actually shows up in the appropriate boxes down here. And so this provides for a, um, a great way to, to do your assessments on the data that you've recorded and have that included in your outputs. So that's just a really brief overview of the capabilities and the variety of things you can do with VGS. We're working on stuff all of the time. And of course, it's driven by need and what people want. And uh, we're working with the NRCS to get this integrated with their other tools and to uh, make it available in a way that works not only on the ground, but also uh, works for you in your, your uh, corporate needs or your, exec your uh, enterprise needs across the NRCS as a whole. And uh, so at this point, I'm going to uh, turn the time over to Mike Kahneman of the Forest Service. Thank you, Dale. I'm very glad to talk to you all today about the VGS system. It's a really exciting system and hope that comes out in what I'm telling you today. I've been a Dell disciple, VGS disciple for a very long time, as Dell said earlier. Um, a long time ago as a forest and range and watershed specialist, I had a, a real passion for monitoring. I was always looking for a better way to collect my data and store it. I was really tired of using paper forms, tired of keeping my data accurate as, as I was moving along a, along a plot, tired of hand cranking my summaries as I moved along and going back to the office and summarizing them there, tired of not seeing my results right after I ran my plots right in the field, tired of carrying all my data, old paper copies with me to the field, I was tired of not being able to compare my current data and just collect, collected with historic data right there at the site. I just I couldn't do that um, the way I was running things. And I was tired of entering the data in the database when I got back to the office. So along came Dell with his VGS system and fixed all these problems. Here's a guy that had a long history of data field data collection and developed a system that streamlined the whole process with touch screen computer technology and presented it in a step-by-step -step fashion that makes data collection and monitoring a dream. He had, all, he, he had added this in this technology that, that only field data collection people would appreciate. But if you're not a field data collection person, you can you can appreciate how much time and money the system provides you. We're estimating a 50 to 80 percent savings in time it takes to do our monitoring. And this the savings comes from preparing to go uh, preparing to go to the field, data, the data collection, the data entry to the data analysis. So all that we believe can be a 50 to 80 percent savings in time and money. Another important factor is data collection consistency and analysis that leads, more, with, leads to more defensible data for planning and, and potentially mitigate some litigation. So the better data we have, the uh, less problems we're going to have. 
BG, BGS is, is ver, also very flexible with the changing data collection needs. Like, like Dell explained with our new sagegrass needs, that wasn't, we didn't have those needs a couple of years ago and we asked, De, we had all of a sudden that came online and we had, to, Dell figured out a way to make it very easy uh, to collect this data through our BGS system. So it's very flexible. BGS is, is very easy to use for the next generation of techie range cons, range specialists, or soils people, or whatever, whoever monitoring uh, using this system. But it's also can be used by less techie folks. The people I've worked with across the board from techie type folks to not have always liked this, uh, like BGS. It also, I think it really improves morale. If you do a lot of monitoring at all, you, it becomes very tedious. And this system, because it speeds everything up and creates it in a ne such nice fashion, it, and you can look at the results, it really helps morale and it and gets you moving from site to site, which is all good when you're out doing this in a in a big uh, for a big project. My suggestion to all, all of you, if you're interested in this at all, is you need to get a hold of a computer or tablet with the VGS system and give it a try. Try out a, tech, a monitoring technique that you're familiar with that you normally do on a, on a piece of paper, and, and you'll be amazed how, how, how Dell has put that technique in a system that just really flows well and really works, and that really works well. Lori, that, that's all I had to share today. Okay, Mike. Thank you very much, Dell. Thank you. That was a great quick overview of VGS. And really quickly, I will just go over some talking points, and then we can open up for questions. I did see that there was one raised hand, um, so we'll get to that. Although I'm not sure, so Sean, I'll need your help on that. Um, but some quick VGS talking points. Of course, uh, it's obviously a field-based data collection system. So anything you collect in the field we can actually have it have all that data work for us. It handles quantitative and qualitative data. It applies to all land uses. You didn't see any cropland uh, protocols in there uh, specific to cropland, but a lot of the current protocols in there work for any land use. Um, so like the ground cover, line point intercept uh, protocols, those would also apply to any residue transects you might want to do on cropland. Um, there's, there's multiple crosswalk uses uh, for the current protocols. And then, of course, we can always build new protocols to handle other needs that NRCS has on the varying land uses. Uh, we, you saw that we're trying to get some soil survey data entry forms uh, developed that would support soil mapping. And also, we're talking about adding some hydric soil uh, determination guidelines in there, as well as any HEL data that you would collect to make an HEL determination. So soil uh, survey-centric kind of uh, data sets. And then also, VGS operates at multiple scales. And those are scales that address spatial, temporal, or administrative needs. We will be able to access uh, and interpret the data for technical development, for use in ecological site descriptions, for reports to producers, reports to leadership, basically wherever you need to utilize data uh, at any scale, we can derive it out of VGS once we've entered it. Uh, the VGS is a publicly available data system, as Dell mentioned. It is free. So we have TSPs, we have partners, we have producers who are all out there trying to collect data uh, to either fulfill a conservation planning need or a program need. And they'll, they are able to do that in VGS. And then they can share the data with NRCS. And we can use that to help support the planning process with them and any technical development needs that the agency has. And then, of course, VGS can be linked. We're working on this uh, kind of concurrently right now. We can link the VGS data to the CDSI system, to a mobile planner, to NASIS, to other databases, so that we can share data elements across those data platforms to make the planning and certification process more efficient, to make uh, technical uh, development, technical tool development more efficient, and so on. 
We currently do have an agreement with the U of A to work on those linkages between CDSI and NASIS. This will allow those systems to essentially exchange data. Uh, when you plug in your system, it can synchronize across the platforms so that planners would be ready uh, to go to the field the next day. They would have their data already um, uploaded in the right spots within their database and it makes the, them much more efficient in the field and really ready to go. Um, just a note that although VGS was lifted up as an approved business requirement to uh, link it to CDSI, for FY18 it was actually taken off the table because we have a pressing need to roll out conservation desktop. So uh, it is still a high-level business need for CDSI, but it's, on, it's on, kind of on hold right now. And then also I just want the group to be aware that we are conducting a VGS beta test in Colorado and Wyoming. Other states or your soil survey office, uh, you are welcome to join us in that beta testing. And in order to do so though, we highly recommend that you utilize a non-NRCS imaged data collection device or a tablet. That will greatly improve the data collection speed because when it's an NRCS imaged device, uh, the hardware kind of limits the speed. It's not VGS that's limiting the speed or the um, efficiency. It's the actual hardware itself. So uh, I encourage anyone get a hold of me or Dana Larson or even reach out to Rachel Mead over in Colorado and ask us any questions that you have. If you want to be a part of a beta test, go ahead and let us know as well. Uh, explore the VGS uh, capabilities within or on their website at vgs.arizona.edu. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sean and see if we have any questions or, or comments. All right. Well, thank you, Lori. And we do have a couple of questions that have come in, and uh, some of those have been replied to, but we'll just uh, go ahead and review those answers. So we had a question. When and where will the recorded session be available, please? And that will be available by early next week on our National Soul Survey Center YouTube channel. And I put the uh, link in the chat so people can copy that and paste it into their browser. Or, you know, if you're available next week, got a moment to check the recording, just use your favorite search engine and put in VGS, and I'm sure it will come right up to the top of your search. Another question was can VGS be loaded on an iPhone or Android cell phone or does it only use a ruggedized field tablet? And uh, Laura, you pretty well answered that, but I don't know if you want to review that answer. Um, I didn't see the answer, but uh, and I can defer to Dell, but it has to be a Windows platform. Is that correct, Dell? At the moment, but as I indicated, we're headed towards making that cross-platform so that we can use it on Android tablets, including Android ruggedized tablets and other items. Uh, phone screens uh, get a little small for some types of uses, but where we can use it, we'll make it available for that too, but that's down the road um, as we are able to make that available. VGS started in the Windows platform because that's what was available at the time but uh, we're moving towards those other platforms as soon as we can. So another question has come in, does this data system work like an app? In other words, could we test interpretations with this system? Uh, I'm not sure what the test interpretations with the system means exactly. I think they mean like soil interpretations. Yeah, Maxine, um, you're the one that put that question out there. Can you give me a call? This is Lori Metz, and we can discuss that. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what you're going for. I'm not trying to avoid the question, and, and because we can't actually hear you speak, uh, I can't get more clarification. So give me a call. Thank you. Are there any more questions? All right, well, Lori, I think we've exhausted the questions. So uh, thank you and the rest of our panel for their time and effort to make the presentation. And thanks to all the participants for joining in. We had more than 70 people join today's webinar. The on-demand recording will be available on our National Soil Survey Center YouTube channel by early next week.
So feel free to let your colleagues know about this training opportunity. This concludes our webinar presentation.